Hey, what's up guys, Steven here. Welcome back to another video and today we're taking a closer look at another ASIC miner. Now this is an Ethereum classic ASIC miner. It's from iPolo. You can find all the links down below and it has a pretty long name because it's the iPolo V1 Mini Classic Plus Wi-Fi. Now iPolo makes a lot of ASICs. You can find them all down below in the description. And there is a, a version without Wi-Fi. There is a version with less hash rate. Um, there are Ethereum ASICs, but this one here is an Ethereum classic ASIC only. Anyhow, um, it's small, has a great form factor, has Wi-Fi built in. It's not so noisy like the big machines. So it's great for uh, miners who do it as a hobby or for people who want to mine at home, um, including me. And this is why I was really interested in checking out this miner and big thanks to Apollo for sending this one over. All right, guys, now I would say, let's get started, let's unbox it, let's check it out, and let's talk a little bit about this device. Alrighty guys, so there we go, here's the iPolo Miner, and as you can see right over here, it's the V1 Mini Classic Plus Wi-Fi version. So if you need Wi-Fi, go with this version, if you don't need Wi-Fi, there's exactly the same without Wi-Fi, so they have the same efficiency, 280 mega hashes per second, at a power consumption of only 270 watts. So that's pretty impressive. Now the power supply came separate, altogether it came in a big box, but the power supply is kind of huge, but it's passive cool, it's not noisy, it's actually really amazing. Now let's open it up and let's check out what we can find inside the box. Now just to mention, I unpacked it before already because I was super curious, but um, here we have the antenna, as you can see, so that's a Wi-Fi antenna, but it's a normal coax antenna, so even you can replace it with any antenna you can buy um, on Amazon, eBay or whatever. Then um, here we have the miner. Now it came in a plastic wrap, of course, but I've already had a look before the video. Now also there was a little, let's check out what that is, like a little instruction card where you can find everything. But um, you find all the instructions on the website and it's pretty clear, it's pretty straightforward. So you don't need to have any kind of user manual. And also if you don't know how to do the setup, in the second video I'll show you exactly how to set up the miner. Well, here's the box and I've expected that it would be much bigger, but this is really tiny and has 280 mega hashes per second. Really impressive. Now, first of all, um, here we have the antenna connector on the back. So here you can just um, screw in the Wi-Fi antenna and there we go. Then um, also on the back here, we have two power connectors. So the power supply has two um, six pins, as you can see, power one, power two. We have an Ethernet port, of course, TF card, also for uh, from firmware upgrades. We have two LEDs, normal LED and default LED. So if the machine has any kind of issue error, if the power supply doesn't deliver enough power, you will probably get the red LED. We have a reset hole, so we can reset, hardware reset the miner, and we have the IP report button, which is really useful. There's an IP um, tool from iPolo, so this is really useful to find the IP on the network of the miner to set it up. Build quality really, really good. So there are no gaps. It feels really well built, kind of heavy. So it has a big heat sink inside. And the iPolo logo here, as you can see, shines. We have here two fans and they're quite powerful. We'll check out the noise levels then when we run the miner. And here, as you can see, once again, it's the classic plus Wi-Fi. So um, that's the machine. So um, let's have a closer look now at the power supply. And there we go. Now it reminds me a lot of a notebook power supply. As you can see, it's quite huge. So I guess around 400 watts and let's check it out. So the maximum is 360, as you can see. So the, it's a bit more than it actually drains. That's good. So you can be sure that this lasts. And we have um, two outputs of 12 volts at 15 amps, which equals 180 watts. So total 360 watts. The cables, good quality. So on some power supplies, especially ant miners, oh my God. Uh, it's really horrible, but here, as you can see, everything well isolated. They are thick. Now they cannot crack out here. Um, that's looking really good. All right, guys, um, that's how the miner looks like. We're going to do the setup in the next video, but I quickly want to um, tell you a little bit about what to mine and what you can expect from the miner. And in the second video, we're going to see if it really lives up to the promise. So let's change to the computer and let's check out what um, are actually the earnings with this machine. 
All right, guys, so there we go. As I've told you before, we're going to split this review in two parts. Now, the first part here was just the unboxing and to check out what can you mine with this machine? When you, will you get Roy? Is it worth it to buy an ETC miner and all that? And also to check out the differences between the miners from my Apollo. And in the next video, we're going to do the setup and also um, I'll leave it running on the pool for some time because we need to get a stable hash rate. So then I can really judge the efficiency, the earnings, etc. So for that, I still need some time, but we can now have a closer look at the products because it's a bit complicated. Now we are using the V-series. Apollo has ETH miners and ETC miners. So this is an ETC only miner. You cannot mine ETH um, with that miner, at least for now. Um, in the firmware, actually, you can just choose ETC. Now the hash rate is 280 mega hashes per second. You will see um, here plus minus 10%, also on the power consumption. Because um, due to the uh, manufacturing, they cannot just nail it down completely to, to, to um, 280. So it will be round about 280, but plus minus 10%, the same for the power consumption. But um, mine actually is running even a little bit better. So yeah, you shouldn't have any issues with that. Now the memory, this is something that's really important when you buy any ASIC. It doesn't matter if it's an Apollo ASIC or any other ASIC, because the memory basically tells you the, the lifespan of your miner. But why does this matter? So let's have a look at the DAG size calculator. You see that Ethereum has right now a DAG size of 4.953 GB. That means, for instance, if you have a graphics card with 4 GB of VRAM, you cannot mine Ethereum anymore. That's why um, you need to have a closer look at the memory. If we go to ETC, um, let's quickly switch that. Where is it? ETC, there we go. We are right now at 3.03 GB. Now, um, if we check out the miner, we can see the design memory is 3.75 gigabytes and says available memory 3.6. So just to be sure, we're just calculating this with 3.6 gigabytes. And if we put in here 3.6, there's an estimate right now because it depends um, on the block height. So we are now um, reaching the 3.6 gigabytes round about at the 27th of April 2024. So that's a little bit less than two years and this miner should make Roy much faster, especially if you keep the coins. I will tell you about that just in a second, why you should keep the coins and not just sell them off right now. All right, guys, and I have to correct myself right now because I was just checking out their website. It's a little bit confusing for me. So it seems like the iPolo V1 Mini Classic Plus, um, if you go to the plus, it says Wi-Fi already. So it doesn't say it in the name, but it seems to have Wi-Fi if you have a closer look at the model number. We'll just verify that later and put you the correct links down below in the description. So this seems to have Wi-Fi already and the Wi-Fi is really convenient, especially if you're a home miner if you um, just want to do, uh, switch locations and you don't want to yeah, just wire it up through your whole house. Then iPolo has also the V-Series ETH miners. Now, um, I did a lot of reviews on ETH ASICs, but a lot of you guys were concerned because Ethereum at some point will go proof of stake. Now, it has been delayed, this has been delayed, it has been delayed. Now, um, it will probably come very soon or not. And um, the thing is that when you buy an Ethereum ASIC, you go a little bit into risk that Ethereum will go proof of stake and there is no mining anymore. That's why a lot of people are now um, looking into Ethereum Classic miners, just the one like I have, because with Ethereum Classic, you can mine much longer because there, there is nothing that goes proof of stake. So this will be um, as long mineable as long as you, uh, the memory of the miner is higher than the deck size. So that's the only um, limit of the lifespan of the miner. Now I've seen some people upgrading the memory on ASICs, especially on end miners or something, but this is not easy to do. And even for me, um, who can solve the chips, it's not an easy thing that I would just want to do because it all takes a lot of time. So my recommendation right now is either to buy an ETH miner that can also do ETC or just go for an ETC miner if you really want to do home mining. And for me, this is really a hobby and this makes me also some good money. All right, so then they also have the B series and the G series, but as you can see, this is in Bitcoin ASIC and there we have um, the G series right over here. So the iPolo G1, for instance, is the Kaka2 32 algorithm with, um, which mines it green coin. But if I would want to buy a miner right now on ASIC, then um, I would probably go for an ETC if I want to do it as a hobby, because um, as you can see, they're tiny, they have really good efficiency, they're not so noisy. All those Bitcoin ASICs are super huge, they're super noisy. Um, this is good if you have a farm somewhere, but if you really want to do that at home, also just for fun to make a little bit of money, then this is very difficult. Now, anyhow, let's check out the profits we could probably get with Ethereum Classic. So we have round about 280 mega hashes per second at a power consumption of 270 watts. 
Now, um, how much you make really depends on how much you spend for electricity. Um, we have, for instance, um, solar power. So um, the 300 watts, I can easily power that from the solar power, which costs me absolutely nothing. So if I put zero in there, I make a profit per year of, ab of about $1,752. But this calculates um, the profit right now on the value of the coin right now. Now everything right now is down. So um, if you would sell um, your, pro your coins, um, you know, constantly, I think you would lose a lot of profit for the future because at some point crypto will go up again and then ETC will also go up again. It can double, it can triple. Right now you have around about a year of uh, having ROI, but if you keep the coins and they kind of double, then it's, you can calculate it's like six months of ROI. If they triple, then you know, it's, um, it's, it's only four months of ROI. So it really depends also when you sell the coins and how much you pay for electricity. If you pay a lot for electricity and you need to cover the cost for it, well, then it's not, not looking so good. But if you, for instance, have free electricity, then this is really almost like free money. And after that, you can still sell the miner because after one year, the deck size will still probably um, be below the 3.6 gigabytes and then the miner is still functioning. So you can also sell it and make profit on the used miner as well. Now, there are people that are doing solo mining on ETC. Now, solo mining um, seems to be very profitable for some people. They got really lucky. But if you really want to have a constant income, um, I would just recommend um, picking a pool. Now, um, I was using on F2 pool, but um, it really comes down to personal preference, which pool to choose. And how to set it up, um, I will show you that in the next video. Actually, the installation of this miner is super simple. And I will still remember the times when we had the first FPGAs. It was very complicated to set up a miner, but right now um, it's really super simple. It's just like you set up a router. So the next video will be the installation. I will show you the income with this miner. And for now, I want you guys to leave your questions down below in the comments so I can cover those in the next video. And also um, tell me what you think. Um, do you think ETC, um, what will happen with ETC? Because nobody knows. Many people will switch from Ethereum when it goes proof of stake probably to ETC. Will it really increase a lot? Will it not increase at all? Will it just be more difficult to mine? Nobody knows right now, so it's kind of interesting. It's kind of a little bit of a gamble, but I think if you want to go into home mining right now, an ETC miner might be a nice choice. All right, guys, so big thanks for watching. I'm Steven from Tech Magnet, and I'm signing out. Have a nice day, and bye.